Hey, well, my name is Glenn Kate, and I work at Avar in the Tampa Bay area. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, the home of the newlywed and the nearly dead. We have. <laughs> I know, it takes a while for you to get that. Uh, seriously, we had the oldest median age of all municipal cities in the U.S. for a while, but we're getting a little younger there, and there's some of us who are <clears throat> getting a little older. But um, hey, it's just really great to be here. This has been a super conference. I have been excited. Uh, I might be really geeky and nerdy, but I love Wi-Fi. I mean, I just love this stuff. If there was a group of access points out in the middle there, I would just dive in the middle and say, access points! And, um, <laughs> Oh, by the way, we have a lot more humidity in the Tampa Bay area than here, and I think the dryness of the Phoenix area has kind of hurt my throat, so we may be doing a five talk and not a 10 talk here, so if that's okay. Besides, Adrian is behind me, I understand, and so when he comes up, practice with me. Adrian, Adrian, yeah, the guy, if you do not have Wi-Fi Explorer on your MacBook, you need to get it on there before you leave the doors today, because it is the best, the best, the best app out there. So. Oh, oh on, on USB? Oh it's, a, oh, it's on your USB key. Okay, cool. Then you will get it. Be sure to install it. I love it. I love that app. So anyway, okay, so I'm going to be talking about um, WLAN terminology. And there are some things we understand as industry professionals and some things we, <clears throat> we kind of have a, uh, as Keith just mentioned, this is a presentation, not a discussion, but I would like to have to continue the conversation. And so let's start this conversation. And here's one thing I think we can maybe all agree upon in this room, and this is an illustration of how a little speaking training in the past, and they say, use a physical illustration because that's how it gets your point across. So, no trick question, what do I have in my hand? An antenna, yes, very good. So I'm gonna do a bill of materials at a building, just kind of surveyed it, maybe six APs, and I'm gonna put in my bill of materials, I'm going to install six Cisco 3702Es and six antennas, is that good enough? No, it's not good enough because we haven't really talked a lot about this antenna. So what else can you tell me about this antenna? Just any interactive. External. External. What else? It's a patch. Okay, it's a patch. Specifically, what kind of a patch? Is it, it's a unidirectional patch? Or, you know, one direct, as opposed to an omnidirectional patch, right? Okay. Now, here's anything else. Sing oh, oh, is it single band or dual band? Let's see. Well, to me, the beauty of an antenna is when you take off the radome. I really think radomes need to be clear and not colored because this is the beauty of the antenna. So what, if you were to look at this up close, Jason, I agree. This is a dual band. Anything else you see by these patch antennas? Dual polarity. Dual polarity, yes. Okay. And if we were to turn on the back, I can't do a Vanna White imitation here, but look at this beautiful tag here. It says it's 10 to 11 dBi, and what type of connectors are these? I took the plastic off. In connectors, they're not RPTNCs, they're in connectors. So we, as a bunch of industry professionals, would leave those doors in just a few minutes and say, I know what kind of antenna that is. Also has a really neat articulating mount. By the way, thanks to Brian at Excel Techs for letting me use this illustration. I appreciate that. Got to ship it back to him, though. He says I can't have it. <clears throat> um, but it's a neat antenna. Here's a problem, though. Uh, in the industry, I really don't think we are talking terms on a lot of the same wavelengths. Um, you can't handle the WLAN terminology. So what kind of terms am I talking about? We're talking about things like design. What does design mean? Well, if I put 10 of you in 10 different rooms, came out with some uh, uh, opportunities to define design, I'd probably come out with 11 different interpretations. Yeah, if you put two engineers together, you always get 11 solutions, right? Okay, but what else are we talking about? We're talking about planning. What is planning? If you were to define WLAN planning is, again, we would have a varied amount of uh, responses. What about analysis? What is analysis? It's in the English dictionary, and I use that term from time to time in WLANs. How about assessment? This was, uh, I, I just did a, a group of uh, uh, actually 26 libraries in the West Central Florida area, did site surveys there, and um, people would, yeah, what are you doing? Don't you wish you had a nickel? for every time someone would ask you what you're doing, you would be rich and retired right now. Um, so I use the word assessment. Oh, okay. Did I explain to them what I was doing? Well, I was walking along, you know, so I wanted to keep walking and not stop my, my, uh, my survey process. And this one, survey, validation. Um, 
do all these terms mean the same? Do, uh, are, are they different? Are, uh, and I really think, as industry professionals, we need to be on the same page. Just like we all know this is a unidirectional patch antenna, dual band, dual polarity, within connectors, and a beautiful articulating mount. We as industry professionals need to use these terms in a proper sense. I would really hope one day, maybe in the, let's say David Coleman is here, right? Maybe in the next edition of the CWNA book, that there'll be a chapter, or at least a subsection, will say something like, the WLAN design process. And explain what that WLAN design process is. And Keith and I have spoken a little bit, and I really believe, if we were to uh, go along here, the best place to start is to start with the term design. And a lot of these other things, um, again, this is an ongoing conversation. This is not something we're going to solve the next three minutes and 54 seconds. We're not going to solve that. But we do, as industry professionals, need to define these terms and to know them well. Because if we can't speak about that, how in the world are we going to explain these things to our customer base? I mean, if we're having problems talking, what about our customers? We need to explain it to them as well. So I really, really, truly believe as industry professionals, we need to go on. And actually, I didn't even know, but some of these conversations have already started. Uh, Alan Blake, is Alan here by any chance? Is he, he's in, he, I think he's UK if I'm not mistaken. But I just got this link this morning. I went through half of it and said, this is good stuff. So if you have not been out of uh, IB Wave sponsoring this, uh, this webinar, please go out and check this out because Alan's got some good stuff in there. I'm looking forward to reading through there. And I just saw this a few minutes ago. Matt Frederick, is he here by any chance? I just saw his blog, he's a, he's a network guy, and he says we need to look at uh, terminology too. So it's a brief blog, and it looks like it's got some good stuff in there. So in a nutshell, friends, I really think we need to continue this conversation. Again, as industry professionals, we need to understand what design is. We need to understand what survey is. Um, the whole idea of predictive survey, I, I really don't like that term. I think we ought to be calling it predictive modeling because we're really not surveying anything, right? Um, but those are terms that we need to define as industry professionals so that we know what we're talking about. And so if we talk to a client, can you imagine two people from a VAR have differences about what a survey is, and one goes and meets with a client, and the next person then, uh, goes to the next day and meets with that client, and guess what happens? That client's confused because, as well, the guy yesterday told me this, but you're telling me this? Is it the same process? Well, we need to be on the same page so we can talk with clients. And, um, I love Wi-Fi, I love this technology. We believe more and more it's a mission-critical technology. It's something that we need to support and we need to go on with. Because if we don't, but if we do, in the words of that great Wi-Fi engineer of old, William Wallace, when he was trying to encourage his troops to storm the English, he yelled those, he yelled those words in Gaelic, which was never interpreted uh, in the movie Braveheart, but should have been, but we know what he said when he said, long live Wi-Fi. Right. <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And let's continue this conversation.